Hey, what's going on everybody? Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. Braving it, but I got a good parking spot for Tater Tot. We are here at the Pike Street Market here in Seattle, Washington. Thanks for joining me, guys. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet. Link below in the video description. We are going to do downtown Seattle, but first, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna get some coffee, but you know, any other day, if I said I was just gonna go to Starbucks and get coffee, it wouldn't mean that much. Unless we were going to the oldest and first location of a Starbucks coffee ever. I believe 1971, or it could be 1981, I forgot the year. But this is the oldest standing one. It wasn't originally here in this spot when it opened. It was a different place, a Pike Place market, but they expanded. And uh, this is the oldest operating basically the first one because it was moved we're gonna get in line for an original cup of starbucks see the starbucks up there we'll see how long the line is here though yeah there's a long line for the best cup of starbucks it's a two block line and this is finally the end of the line right yeah but it's all worth it right <laughs> all right i've heard stories of longer lines to get to the front here was 33 minutes for me i am next as they monitor attendance here's the old logo the very first logo with the mermaid showing her uh tatas there <laughs> we are almost there guys we're next all right we're going in uh, it's still pretty crazy busy in here all right my coffee order is in and guys just like my disneyland one this is the the been there series of the pike place starbucks mug so uh i went ahead and got that because there's no magnets here no magnets if you can believe that but we got a, a coffee coming so they did move to this larger location and it's funny because it's still the smallest starbucks i've ever been inside all right i got me a vente mocha with an extra shot there let's test it out mm. That's worth a 35 minute wait. Let's go explore more at Pike Place. All right, what a beautiful day in Seattle. This is the uh, city fish market. Or sometimes they, uh, they're they they're throwing some fish around out here. I don't see any action going on right now. Yeah, this is where they do it. And uh, <laughs> no customers when I'm here. They'll wait around here a little bit and maybe they'll uh, throw some fish scales around here. I don't know yet. Oh, look at this one. He's like, ah. <laughs> he got me. He got me over there. That's good. Well, sat here 10 minutes and uh, nobody's buying any fish today. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll roll a clip of what, what you would usually see right here, but not today when I'm here. Yep, Pike Place Market runs uh, about, about three blocks. Oh, there's a downstairs too. There's a downstairs and an upstairs. Multiple floors. In fact, that sign right there, that says level four. I love all the uh, neon everywhere. Lots of neon signs. That's cool. Lobak Meat Company. They got some honey there. There's some fresh flowers. Lots of fresh produce there. I just need a magnet. Boy, it's busy. It is It is very, very busy. Oh, wait up. Look what I just found. Uh, I see patches and stickers. And I found magnets. Anything that says Pike Place? Yeah. Let me see. Okay, I found one right there. That's kind of cool. That's, that's literally the only one that says Pike Place on it, though. The only one. It's just too ordinary for me, you know? I don't, you know, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go with this one. It's a three-dimensional apple, like taking a bite, because, you know, Seattle's well-known. There's a Space Needle in there and, and Mount Rainier in the distance. I think that's the one I'm gonna get. Plus, it's the only one here like that. It's good to see I'm so popular here again, but man, it is hard to walk around. It's like being at a theme park. Excuse me. There we go, it opened right up. All right, what else can we find? All right, well, we reached uh, one end of the market. Let's go downstairs. Go downstairs. Oh, yeah. We're going down in the alley. Quite possibly the most famous alley uh, anywhere. The walls are caked in gum, guys. The famous gum wall of Seattle. Chew some gum, donate some gum. 
The ground is littered with gum. Just a just a beautiful sight. Well, how'd they get it all the way up there? Oh my gosh, it just goes and goes. Just whatever you do, guys, don't touch it. Oh, they're putting some gum up there. It's a good location. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess every few years, uh, the city comes by and, and cleans all the gum off the wall. And then it takes like a month before it's all right back again. It's crazy. And then you got all the sun just melting the gum down from everywhere. <laughs> oh man. All right, we still haven't hit up the other end of the Pike Place Market, so I'm gonna go drop off my magnet at the car and then we'll finish this. Okay, there's a kitty playing a violin. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. That's a weird Mickey. <laughs> That's different. Then they got some weird shirts here. Oh, I love it. It's like uh, the Oregon Trail. All right, well, with that, we're pretty much finished. I mean, I didn't stop it. Everything's, I don't want to see everything, but that is one happy pig right there, huh? Yeah, a little bit of stuff outside. I see a lot of people eating food, but I don't know where they're really getting food because all I saw was seafood and I'm not into it. I'm just not into it. Oh, okay. Behind this big construction crane, you might be able to see the Seattle Ferris wheel down there. It's an enclosed Ferris wheel. Yeah, I just realized that we never actually went down to this floor, which this sign says shops and restaurants. Let's go check it out. I don't know about the shops down here. Certain certain shops are not gonna get not gonna get my business. Um, <laughs> nope. If you want to restrict customers to being forced to wear a mask, you're you're in the wrong industry. They got the world famous giant shoe museum. I didn't know there were that many giant shoes, but there's Robert Wadlow from uh, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, interesting. Oh, I didn't even know they still sell baseball cards. <laughs> and a Pike Place magic shop. Oh, they got a, actually it's not a Zoltar. It's a Swami. It's different than a, than a Zoltar. Huh, but I don't have any quarters with me right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come back there, Swami. Here we go, Golden Age Collectibles. This is right up my alley. Whew, it's about 100 degrees in here, and you have some fans, but they're not doing anything, and there's, there's nothing Mickey anywhere in here. Lots of Star Wars stuff, and like Marvel DC stuff, and Pokemon stuff, but you would think that somewhere in this entire market I could find something appetizing, but I guess I'm just a picky eater. Couldn't find a burger anywhere, so I'm gonna get out of Pike Place and uh, get to a little less crowded area. Oh wow, this uh, transit bus in front of me, see how it's hooked to the wires? I, I know they do this in uh, San Francisco, or at least used to, but I didn't know they still did this. I thought they switched these all to like biofuel, but he's gotta stay connected for electric to power this bus. That's crazy. There he goes, we're gonna turn here, but yeah. So he can't go anywhere where there isn't a wire. That's crazy. All right, let's get at least out of downtown Seattle and find a bite to eat. Uh, I'm following what Google says. It tells me I need to go through right here, but there's a checkpoint with a with an officer. Oh my gosh, what have I done? All right, made a U-turn. Little update here for you. Apparently, it is it is no longer open to the public. It was before COVID and I didn't get my chance, but nice officer here at the gate told me to go down to the dog park where we might still be able to get a view of it. So let's go try this. All right, let's go on a walk. Let's go on a little adventure, leave Tater Tot here. We're at a, uh, uh, it's an off leash uh, dog park out here with a dog wash station. <laughs> So I'm trying to find what is now closed. Oh, over on the other side over there is the Sound Garden. Uh, you probably know of quite a few famous rock bands from the 90s. Sound Garden, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. These are rock bands from, you know, my growing up in the 90s, back when, back when MTV actually played music videos instead of just reruns of Teen Mom. <laughs> and uh, the officer at the gate said that this would be the closest that we can see. And actually, looking through the chain link, yeah, right over there, I can faintly see it off in the distance, the Sound Garden. 
Uh, once uh, open to the public, uh, you used to be able to walk through there and hear the sound garden. It's hard to explain. Let me, let me roll a uh, clip. But it is no longer available to us. Uh, that is where the band Soundgarden got their name uh, here in Seattle. <sighs> it's warm, but summer has just about come to an end here. It is going to start getting cooler, and that precipitation, moistness is going to start falling once again. I'm just about out of here, guys. I got one more day. Actually, um, I, I found something here, guys. I found a, a stop that is probably going to have some food and fun and some AC, some air conditioning. Let's go head to this spot in Seattle. Well, okay, so we didn't actually get that far out of Seattle. Let me lock up the car real quick. And I gotta pay for parking again. It's only bummer part about these big cities is there's no free parking anywhere. And all of them, Pike Place and this one, they're, you're limited to two hours. You can't buy more than two hours. It's uh, 50 cents an hour. Enter your plate number. That's going to be T-8-T-R-T-O-T. -T -T. Tater tot. The, oh, thanks for just throwing it on the ground there. Tater tot, we'll be back. Gonna go try to find something to eat here in Seattle after all. I'm just a really picky eater. Here's more seafood <laughs> and sushi. There's happy lamb hot pot. Huh. Another Chinese restaurant. <laughs> There's a Thai place, but Thai food gives me really bad heartburn. Wait a minute. Great state burgers. I think we're in luck, guys. Um, looks like... Are they closed? Oh no, there's another entrance right here. Okay, cool. No, they're also closed. Interesting. <laughs> it's Seattle. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to eat sushi and seafood, I guess. <laughs> Where's a McDonald's when you're just craving a burger? Oh, this is crazy. We got Shanghai Garden. Uh, Country House Bakery seems to be closed. And then King's Barbecue House. Let's check it out. Oh, look what they got hanging here. Chicken. Hmm. Strike out again, cash only. And I didn't bring any cash with me, just card. Sometimes some places are card only. You can't pay with cash. I don't know, man. Seattle is a weird city when you're trying to eat food. All right, believe it or not, this is what I'm after, guys. <laughs> You can see this sign up here. It's the Seattle Pinball Museum. All right, so check this place out, guys. We're here on the uh, first floor. There's also an upstairs. All of these pinball machines you get to play. And I can already see some in there that I don't recognize, but we're gonna start in chronological order here, guys. This is uh, Genko's High Fly from 1956. It's baseball. It's baseball. It does say that uh, we can't play this one, but man, that is pretty cool. And then Bobo here. Oh my gosh, let's test it. Oh, it works. They have some snacks, but no burgers or anything. So I got a, a bottle of Pepsi. So for Bobo here, after you start, this is the button that pops the ball up. So you got to push that in. I can do it, there it goes, and then it's ready to go. I gotta have two hands though. Oh. Aww. All right, here's uh, Gottlieb's Swing Along from 1963, and Buckaroo. This is my favorite looking one so far from 1965. Look at that. All right, here we go, ball in play. Oh, the sound effects are awesome. <laughs> the flippers are a little soft, but just the fact that this works from the 1960s. Oh, so cool. All right, and moving on to the late 60s, here's Casperville and Funland and King Tut, and then finally 1970 Bally. 
Expressway. Yeah. Now it's automatic. Now the ball comes automatic. Alright, a few more from the 70s. Stardust, 1971. Here's Kiss by Bally, 1979. The same exact year they came out with uh, the Playboy that I had. Nip It from 1973, also Bally. Actually, this one I really, really want to play. That's awesome. It's all great outdoors fishing. Look at that. Love it. So at some part of the gameplay, these moved. I don't know if you can see the line in there, but the flippers get closer, so you really can't miss. See the line? They'll move in, and then it kind of cuts off the middle. It's weird. See how they just moved in right there? I mean, maybe a ball can fit through, but it makes it easier, right? Now when I use the flipper, <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? I need both hands, though. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh. All right, we'll come back down to the bottom floor to try out the newest games later, which are the most popular. Oh, cool, they got some old uh, marquees from some other pinball, Space Shuttle. My buddy, my brother Barry, has that pinball in his house. Space Station. Oh, what do we got up here? Oh, okay. Yep, oh, they got Fun House and Terminator 2. Fun House. This is a cool one. That's a fun game. Look at all the LED upgrades. Man. Man, I've never even seen this one. Black Hole. They've actually got two of them by Gottlieb. I've never even seen one of them. Neither of them are working. It says restoration in progress. You can see through that screen there. Maybe they're trying to take two machines and make one good one. Weird. Wow. Black Knight. A little view down to the uh, first floor down there. So uh, yeah, 20 bucks for an all day pass, unlimited play. I just wish they had some hamburgers. Then a couple more from the 70s. These are more like the era of my Playboy pinball. In fact, here's a 1975 Bally Wizard here. Captain Fantastic over there. So yeah, old school, old school. This is an old game with no description. Something you shoot in there. I don't know if this one works. And then they have a uh, Rockola jukebox here. And I believe this plays uh, eight tracks. I miss my, I miss my jukebox. It's probably my favorite piece back at the shop, back downstairs. And this whole wall of the newer stuff is definitely the most popular. Every game's filled up except for Guns N' Roses. Very colorful though. Yeah, these are all at least $12,000 pinball machines. I wanna play Dale Jr. right there. I might wait in line for uh, Willy Wonka here too. It's a really fun one. They have that at, they have that at CP Pinball back in Illinois. All right, Willy Wonka just opened up here. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. an all-time low score, 2,800. All right, last one I want to play here that I've never played, Toy Story 4. Look at this play field. Lots going on over here. Very bright, colorful game. Let's play. No, no, no. Oh, really cool, fun place. Did not know that was in Seattle. And I got a magnet. It's a pinball machine with a doggy on it. Magnet from the pinball museum, awesome. Never did find any good food here in Seattle. I mean, there's probably plenty of good food. I'm just so picky. We gotta get back to camp. I've gotta start packing up. Opie dopey, you missed all the fish. There was salmon and halibut and sushi and tuna. You missed the tuna. I didn't see him throwing any tuna either. Just so you know. 
Tara Bobera, how you doing, girl? You guys want some num num treats? Yeah, you need some. You want to show me where they're at? Because I don't know. This is my first day. Are they in the fridge? You like your butt scratched? Yes, you love your butt scratched. You give me kisses. You're such a good girl. You're such a sweet girl. I missed you, Tara. I missed you guys. All packed up here at camp. Table clear. Just got to connect the car in the morning and then uh, we'll be saying goodbye to the Pacific Northwest. Although it'll take us a couple days at least to get to Oregon. But um, there's still summer down south. Like Oregon is still in the 90s and uh, California it's still warm in California too. So uh, this is going to be a little extended summer. Yeah. We're going to be doing a week of boondocking at least, so I will fill up the water tank tonight, get that full. We'll dump the tanks in the morning because these aren't full hookup sites. And then we'll be doing some boondocking and I'm looking forward. Oh, you can't see. You didn't see that, did you? There's nothing back there yet. That, that's for the future. Don't worry about what's in the back of my RV right now. You guys be well. Opie and Tara and I will see you in the next video as we leave the state. Bye, guys. Whoop.